I just want to thank everybody for attending today. This is the first of two webinars being hosted by Teal Technologies Canada, showcasing Belkasoft's products. Uh, my name is Dave Burton. I'll sort of be the host and moderator. Um, I've been with Teal for about a year now. I work in the Toronto area, Toronto, Ontario. So I will handle any needs of uh, sort of the East Coast customers. Today we'll be focusing on Belkasoft Evidence Center. Um, and I would like to welcome Jared Lubert, who's a forensic sales engineer for Belkasoft North America and digital forensic expert, having worked on cases from various industries, including the energy industry, manufacturing, high technology, medical, and real estate. He's the founder and lead examiner of Gateway Forensics, a veteran-owned digital forensics company located in Maryland, and I'll let him do a more detailed introduction when he starts. Today, we'll have an overview of Belkasoft, the company, what Belkasoft Evidence Center is capable of, what types of acquisitions and file systems and artifacts are supported by Belkasoft Evidence Center, a walk through the settings and customizations, how to add or acquire devices or images to be analyzed, platform and appearance of the product, viewers that are available for the various artifacts that are found, and much more. Just so that everybody's aware, we're going to try and set aside 15 to 20 minutes at the end for a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, if you could jot them down or throw them into the chat, I'll try and monitor that and we'll address any of your concerns at the end. And without further delay, I'll turn it over to Jared and uh, he can begin his presentation. Jared. All right, thank you so much for the uh, the introduction there, Dave. Uh, so my name is Jared Lubert. Uh, as he mentioned, I am a forensic sales engineer for Belksoft. I uh, own my own company, Gateway Forensics, located here in Maryland. Uh, now, I, I want to jump straight into the product to give you all as much uh, you know, exposure as I possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to run through uh, probably about 10 PowerPoint slides as quick as I can uh, while not leaving out anything important uh, and then jumping into the product itself uh, so you guys get as much time uh, screen time as you can with the product. Uh, I will be uh, your technical support um, with Belkasoft X uh, and my information will be on the final slide right before questions. So with that, I will go ahead and get started. So what is Belkasoft Evidence Center X? Well, it's an all-in-one digital forensic and instant, instant response tool. Uh, but what does that mean? It means we cover the four major di digital forensic branches. So that includes mobile, cloud, memory, computer. Uh, we have multiple additions, uh, but kind of a highlight of our addition, um, uh, our highest addition is the corporate edition of Belkasoft X. This includes things such as an incident investigations module. Uh, it's really good for identifying methods of persistence, uh, recently downloaded folders, apps that run at startup, uh, prefetch files and so on. And I will actually show you what's available in this instant investigations module, uh, which by the way, we made into an individual tool if you do not want the entire version of Belksoft Evidence Center X corporate edition, uh, but that will be a demo for another day. Uh, also with the corporate edition is something known as cross case analysis. This is going to maintain a centralized repository of all the artifacts that you've ever loaded into Belkasoft Evidence Center X on your forensic workstation. So whenever I show you a little bit later on in the product where I go open case and it'll show you all the cases I've ever worked on, uh, what that's doing is it's just maintaining that centralized uh, repository of all the artifacts. So if say five months ago I analyzed a phone, uh, I get a couple artifacts, I get file hashes, it saves those. So say four months later, uh, I'm analyzing another phone and I get a hit for a match from a, a different device entirely. So all of a sudden we're making these cross case connections. Uh, so that's what a cross case analysis is. And I can show you what that looks like inside the product. 
So uh, Bokusoft X has the ability to acquire hard drives in two different types of formats, uh, a DD or raw image or E01. Your, uh, your, your hash calculations of SHA-1, 256, and MD5 with that optional verification uh, for that forensic soundness. If you plan on transferring the image that you've created across multiple machines, we do have an option that allows you to split the image up into chunks of a given size. Uh, you get to pick whatever size you want to chunk it to. Uh, if you are out in the field doing the uh, acquisitions often, Belksoft Evidence Center X works on a Microsoft tablet, so you, you can use it in the field. Uh, as far as memory acquisition goes, uh, we do have a free live RAM capture tool that's available at uh, belksoft.com forward slash git, and that is for Windows machines. Okay, jumping straight into the acquisition methods uh, with Belkasoft X, we will start with the Android mobile devices. So you can see here we have a pretty healthy list of uh, Android acquisition methods. The first one is the Andr uh, advanced ADB acquisition. Now, what makes it advanced? If you look through this list, you'll see a couple acquisition methods that utilize the ADB. Um, so that's going to be your standard ADB backup, your agent-based backup, and your APK downgrade. All three of these methods rely on ADB in order to acquire the device. What the advanced ADB acquisition does is it combines those three acquisition methods into one. So no longer you have to create three different acquisitions for the device, you can do it all in one shot. So that's what the advanced ADB acquisition is. Your standard uh, ADB backup, obviously that's going to require AD, um, USB debugging enabled with developer options turned on. The Android file system copy is for rooted Android devices. It's important to note that Belkasoft does not root devices, but we do have the capability of acquiring rooted devices. Uh, again, we have a physical dump option for rooted devices. The agent-based backup utilizes ADB to sideload an application onto the device and obtain a what, what's equivalent to an ADB backup with an agent. Uh, so th the reason that you might have to use an uh, agent-based as opposed to ADB backup uh, you know, could just be that there might be a damaged port, damaged cable. Uh, for you know, some reason, it's not allowing you to do a standard ADB backup. Uh, the agent that goes onto the device is removed upon completion of the acquisition. The next is the PTP MTP, your picture transfer protocol, media transfer protocol. This will get you your pictures, videos, audios, and maybe a few applications depending on the type of application. The next three are chipset exploits that we have. So MediaTek, Qualcomm, and Spreadsham. This is going to rely on the chip, the chipset that's on the device. Um, so uh, you'll notice that there's an agent-based MTK right next to MediaTek. Uh, that's utilizing the exploit from the chip uh, that we have uh, in order to acquire uh, to put an agent on the device and acquire that as well. A full supported device list can be found at belkasoft.com forward slash and you would type MTK underscore supported underscore devices. Same for Qualcomm and Spreadroom. You're just replacing the MTK. Uh, as far as APK downgrade, a lot of times uh, and now more than ever, uh, app developers do not want people to be able to read their, uh, their end users data. So they're no longer allowing their data to be included in a backup. So APK downgrade will identify the version of application that you have on the device you're trying to acquire, let you know what a downgradable version of that application is. It will downgrade the application, pull as much data as it can from that application, and then restore the version of that application on the Android device. The final acquisition method is the screen capture. Uh, whenever this first came out within the last, uh, I guess two releases ago, uh, it was meant initially just for Signal, WhatsApp, and Telegram messages. Uh, since then, in the latest release, uh, it will now work on any application, social media, uh, news feeds, notification feeds, uh, you name it. If you can scroll it, you can capture it. So uh, this is a, a forensically sound way to acquire 
these uh, messages, really anything that's on the phone uh, that you need to scroll with. Uh, and so I can show you what that looks like inside the product. Next, we move on to iOS acquisition methods, and this is going to be uh, kind of like the bread and butter uh, when it comes to uh, Belksoft X. Uh, so the standard iTunes backup that only requires the latest iTunes version uh, on your forensic workstation, a full logical copy for jailbroken iOS devices. Uh, now, this is for, uh, again, jailbreaking devices. We do not jailbreak devices, but we do support the acquisition of them. Uh, we support devices that are jailbroken with Check Rain, Uncover, and Odyssey, which is really the top three jailbreaks uh, for the latest iOS models. One thing that sets us apart is our Checkmate acquisition option on a Windows platform. Uh, we do have the ability to acquire a full file system of a uh, of an iOS device with A5 through A11 chipsets. So that's going to be your iPhone 5S through iPhone X and app, uh, iPad Air through 7. Uh, so with that being said, the device does not have to be jailbroken in order to acquire the device uh, with Checkmate. Uh, there are two different options for acquiring data. We have BFU mode before first unlock. The password is not known or it was reset. And the following option is after first unlock. The password is known and it is unlocked. Uh, so here we're, we're kind of put in this situation where we can now acquire information even if we don't have the password uh, for that iOS device. Now you will not get all of the information, but you will get a lot of the information, uh, which is something that we typically uh, would not have access to. And this, uh, with this method, we also have the ability to lift USB restricted mode uh, as well. The agent-based acquisition is in uh, probably one of my favorite uh, iOS acquisition types as uh, it doesn't require uh, an exploit. Uh, so basically it is a agent-based and requires an Apple developer ID. Now, this Apple Developer ID can either be a paid Apple Developer ID or a free Apple Developer ID. The difference between the two is that the paid Apple Developer ID on your forensic workstation uh, can utilize the internet through your forensic workstation and not through the device. So you will create that trust with your computer and it will do that handshake with Apple, put the agent on the device, and you can acquire a full file system copy with this agent, and that is then removed upon completion. Now, the paid Apple Developer ID is $99 and can be bought through uh, the Apple Developer website. Uh, if you do not want to pay the $99, we do have a free option for this agent base as well. So this one, the, the caveat to this one is that the internet has to be turned on on the iOS device that you're trying to acquire uh, so it can make that that handshake with Apple uh, and trust the certs to put the agent on the device. Uh, now, for the agent-based acquisition, uh, you can acquire any iOS device that's running iOS version 10 all the way to uh, mid 14s at this point. Uh, they, I do believe that the next release of Belksoft X uh, is actually bumping up the uh, the iOS version support, uh, and so I'm not going to name a specific iOS version at this time. The next one is the Apple File Conduit, which is the uh, brother or sister of the MediaTek, uh, not MediaTek, I'm sorry, uh, Picture Transfer Protocol, Media Transfer Protocol of an Android device. Uh, so that's your pictures, videos, audio files. Uh, and the next is crash reports. So crash reports can be a treasure trove of information as they can contain system information such as IP addresses. Uh, it's also another really good way to identify if an application was on a device at a specific time. Anytime that the system crashes or the, an application crashes, it dumps to these crash reports and lists the application names, date timestamps, and so on. So this is a really good uh, acquisition to obtain uh, if you're looking for something like that.
As far as cloud acquisitions go, uh, we do support Carbonite, a cloud storage option, uh, iCloud, the Google Suite to include Google Keep, Google Timeline, Google My Activity, Google Drive, uh, and so on. Uh, now we support Instagram, WhatsApp downloads from either a phone number or a QR code. Webmail services, uh, we support currently close to 30 different email, uh, the, the big name email. Uh, now, another really interesting feature about our email acquisition is that if the one, the email that you want is not listed, such as a, uh, you know, an enterprise exchange server that's kind of proprietary to that company, uh, we do have the option where you can enter in the email address, the password, uh, the server that is hosting the, the webmail, and then the port number that they're using um, so that you can actually acquire any mailbox with this information. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, the next one is another one of my favorites. It's virtual machine acquisitions. Uh, so say that you've acquired a computer, uh, say E01, you load it into Microsoft X, it starts processing the image after you told it what you wanted to process it for. You do not have to know that a virtual machine is on that system image in order to analyze it. Microsoft X will automatically detect that there's a virtual machine, pull it out, and allow you to uh, analyze that virtual machine separately from that system image, and it will be listed as a nested data source. And I'll show you what that looks like inside the product. Uh, and we do have the ability to load in uh, VMDK files and other types of virtual machine files as well. Belksoft X supports uh, VMware, Virtual PC, VirtualBox, and Zen Server. As far as supported file systems and operating systems, you can see that we have a pretty wide range. Uh, we have uh, APFS, FAT, FAT32, NTFS, HFS, EXT, uh, yet another file system. Uh, so there is a lot of support here. This is the We Play Well with other slide. Uh, right below that, you can see that we have support for uh, logical in case files, regular in case files, FTK image files, Xways, Atola, DMG, so Mac image files, uh, and many, many more. Uh, and I will show you that as well. Uh, dealing with encryption. So with the Belkosoft Evidence Center X Forensic Edition and Corporate Edition, there is built-in encryption detection and decryption with the use of uh, Belkosoft's partner, uh, Passware, and their Forensic Kit. Uh, the Forensic Kit is built to be, work seamlessly with Belkosoft X uh, to identify encrypted volumes, uh, files, uh, and so on. And, and again, that uh, is uh, Passware's forensic kit. So anything that they support as far as decrypting uh, will be supported inside Belkosoft X as well. And as far as a uh, whole disk encryption, uh, typical uh, BitLocker, FileVault, TrueCrypt, VeraCrypt, PGP, uh, and so on, it will say, hey, we've detected this image to be encrypted with this. Please enter the recovery key or password to decrypt the image. Supported mobile device images uh, that we have, uh, gray key dumps, tar image files, uh, iTunes backups, Android backups, Huawei, Xiaomi's, um, Blackberries, uh, UFED, uh, so we can load Celebrite images into Belksoft X, TWRP, Oxygen backups, chip offs, JTAGs, uh, you name it, we can, we can most likely load it into Belksoft X. Now I mentioned that Belksoft had a uh, live RAM capture that acquired Windows memory. Uh, while we can only acquire Windows memory, we do have the ability to load and analyze Windows, Linux, and ARM memory dumps inside Microsoft X. Gives you the uh, potential to restore a list of processes. Look at those processes uh, within hex. Um, sometimes we can even recover dead processes, and I'll show you, uh, you know, hey, this process is alive uh, or this process is not alive. Uh, and we also have the potential to detect malware inside of a process. So if a process name looks suspicious, Microsoft X will identify it as suspicious. And then you can choose to push that file to VirusTotal and see if there's known malware associated to that specific process. 
As far as supported artifacts and features, out of the box, we're currently on the upwards of close to 1,600 different types of artifacts out of the box. Uh, you can carve and recover deleted and hidden artifacts. Um, and with that, I mean, we uh, do support free list. So if uh, something is marked for deletion in a free list, uh, we can pull it out and let you know that this was deleted. As well as Slack space, unallocated space, you can carve these areas and look for deleted information as well. Um, when it comes to uh, Belkasoft analyzing pictures and videos, we do have picture analysis for face, and you can group the faces into folders. Uh, skin detection, pornography detection, gun detection, and text detection. With text detection, it utilizes OCR in 50 different languages. Uh, and then the multiple video stream detection within single videos. So if someone is trying to hide a video behind another video, Belkasoft X can detect that there is more than one video stream and you can actually open up that video inside the program and view vo both tracks, uh, something that previously uh, you could only do uh, with VLC, assuming you knew there was a multiple track behind that video. Uh, so these are the different editions that are available. Uh, I've been speaking on corporate edition and forensic edition as they are the most popular as they include the most viewers and the most uh, features. Uh, so again, corporate edition is the only one that has incident investigations module and the cross case analysis. And the forensic edition has the hold this encryption and full volume encryption, decryption and the checkmate iOS acquisition options. Uh, the forensic edition does include computer, mobile, and cloud, uh, while our focused editions, if you get X computer, only analyzes computers, and if you get X mobile, only analyzes mobile. So that is the last slide that I have when it comes to the PowerPoint. The next one's going to be an information slide. Uh, I will come back to this when I am complete. So, uh, now, I am going to jump into the product. Um, so this is the main screen of Belkasoft X. Uh, this is kind of where you as the examiner are going to make Belkasoft do what you want it to do. Uh, the first thing, whenever you click the executable to open up Belkasoft, this is what you're presented with. I had mentioned uh, open case uh, while giving the presentation, uh, but first I want to show you create case. Uh, pretty standard, you enter the name of your case, where you want to store it, your time zone, uh, your name, and a description of the case. All of this can be edited at any time uh, throughout your investigation, and I will show you that once we get to the main dashboard. If I select open case, you can now see any cases that I've ever indexed with Belkasoft X. You can see date timestamps, you can see who the investigator was, the different types of data sources that I've loaded into those cases. Uh, and this is that central repository that I was telling you about. Just like it maintains how many cases and data sets that I've, I've loaded in to this forensic workstation, it's also going to keep that centralized database for the artifacts and their, their hashes. Uh, so that's where that cross case analysis is going to come from. So I'm not going to click any of those because I already have a case that's opened. Uh, but now what I want to do is jump into the settings. So this is really going to be where you're going to tailor Belkasoft X to perform how you want it to perform. In the general section of the settings tab, uh, we will see where our application is stored. Uh, the temporary folder of where things temporarily open inside the product, such as your, your video viewers, your picture viewers, uh, and so on. Below here, you'll see CPU cores to use and memory cache size for indexing. Uh, so this is really, really neat. Now you're seeing, okay, uh, 12 cores and 31 gigs of RAM. Well, uh, my forensic workstation or my admin workstation that I'm currently on has 12 processor cores and 32 gigs of RAM. Belkasoft X will automatically detect these settings in your forensic workstation and allow you to dictate how many CPU cores and how much RAM you will devote to indexing your case. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend here uh, is that you have at least two gigs of RAM per uh, 
per course. So for this one, I would say, okay, use you know 24 gigs of RAM and 12 CPUs. So this will speed up the uh, processing of your case uh, tremendously. Now, uh, the options under here, check automatic for updates. I always keep this checked. That way, anytime I open Belkasoft, I wanna know that I'm using the latest and greatest support um, that Belkasoft has to offer. Jumping into appearance, uh, you can see uh, the language. It's currently set to English, uh, but if you have examiners who speak or read other languages, they can be uh, translated here, and this will turn uh, the language in the entire program. It's not just on the report. Uh, the font size slider, you have the option to make your font smaller or to make it larger. Uh, the themes, we're currently in dark. I like to keep it in this one, it's better for the eyes, uh, but the light version uh, is, is great as well. If you want to change your date formats or time formats, you can certainly do that in here. It's all about uh, preference and default encoding can also be changed from here. Analysis profiles, you can think of this as kind of like a, a quick tap of you know, what, how you want to analyze a piece of evidence. If you are, say, doing incident investigations on a Windows machine, you can name one of these incident investigations for Windows and already have a predefined uh, selection of artifacts that you want to carve out of your data source. Uh, so it's just kind of a quick way to allow you to start processing your image without going through and individually selecting different types of artifacts. Uh, all of these are customizable uh, and you don't have to use them. You can just do a custom one each time. Bookmarks, this is where you're going to come to change the category name. Now, you cannot change the color and you cannot change the hotkey for uh, the bookmark categories. Uh, you can, however, make this say category one and have thousands of different bookmarks for that category one. You're not just limited to 10 different types of bookmarks, you're just limited to 10 different categories of bookmarks. Moving into carving, this is where you would come if you wanted to try to carve additional information from an image that maybe was not processed uh, within Belkasoft X. The example that I show here uh, is a wallet, Bitcoin wallet characteristic. So I found evidence on a uh, data source that there was a shredded Bitcoin wallet potentially left over on the machine. So I looked at the known good Bitcoin wallet, found a common characteristic, pulled the header out, and now what I can do is search the entire disk again uh, for any sort of fragmented Bitcoin wallet characteristic. Uh, and so from here, I can potentially find more information than I would have originally. Uh, so that's just an example of how to use the uh, carver. Jumping into pictures, uh, these are going to be your sensitivity levels and how you want to view your pictures. Uh, now, face detection and skin detection, you have three different options, less, medium, and more false positives. Uh, so again, that's all just preference. Uh, if you chose to analyze pictures for pornography, you can blur these pictures so you don't have to look at them. If you choose to blur these pictures, you can unblur the face uh, so you can see who is in the picture without looking at the picture itself. Okay, jumping into videos, if we have, say, uh, you know, a bunch of videos and they're kind of long videos, we can actually cut down how many frames per second we want to pull out in the frame similarity. So instead of watching the videos, you just get little snippets of the videos and find the most interesting portion of the video for you to jump into. Next is virus total. I told you this is where you would go if you were to, uh, you know, analyze uh, your suspicious process names or, or where you want to run an entire data source through VirusTotal to see if there's any malware present on the data source. Um, so that is it for the settings. Uh, down here in the main uh, bottom screen, you'll see two to three minute short uh, tutorial videos on kind of getting started within Microsoft X. If you have any questions, you can watch these short videos uh, to help you out and they are all voiced over uh, by the Vice President of Sales uh, for North America, uh, James Cooksey. Okay, opening up the dashboard uh, of Belkasoft X, I had mentioned that you can change the details of the case. You will do that right here. Um, so clicking this little edit button, you can change any of these details. 
Now, going down the left hand side of the screen, uh, I like to break it up into three different sections. Uh, so the actions pane, uh, the data source pane, and then kind of the informational pane on the dashboard. So going straight down, the first item under actions is to add a data source. Uh, this can be done from here, but it can also be done by this little blue circle in the top right hand corner of the data sources screen. Uh, so I will select add data source and you can see uh, that we have three different options. We can add an existing data source. We can acquire a data source or we can triage a data source, which by the way, triage is another tool that we've pulled out um, and are now offering individually. Uh, if you're not wanting to buy the entire bulk soft evidence center X and again that will be covered in a different demo. So for now I'll select add existing. Uh, you can see the different types of existing images that we can load in. Uh, let's just choose image for now. So it'll open up your browser. If I open this up, you can see all of the different types of images uh, that are supported within Microsoft X. So you have seven zip files, RARs, TARs, ZIPs, AFs, ADs, E01s, DMGs, RAWs, um, v, uh, virtual machine files, XWAYS files, uh, even floppy disk image files, which is pretty great. Uh, now, jumping into uh, say mobile devices, again, opening this up, you can see all the different types of image files that can be loaded into Microsoft X for analysis. Uh, if we were to select a memory dump, we get .mems, hyperfills, and page files. Uh, and then disk drives, what this is going to do is it, it's just like you'd be acquiring it locally, uh, but this is going to list all drives that Microsoft X can read uh, that are connected to your forensic workstation. Uh, so if I click back out, click back in, uh, typically it will uh, have identified these drives within a rather uh, quick amount of time. So now physical drive, logical drive, sometimes you get serial numbers up here, it tells you their size, uh, their mountain drive letter, uh, and so on. So you can do physical or logical copies from here. And if I go to acquire, uh, this is where we'll see our acquisition options for mobile. Uh, again, disk drives, it's just going to pull that where you can obviously connect it to a write blocker and create a physical or logical image of the drive. If I go to mobile, my two options, Android, uh, you select whatever type of device you have. If the one you want is not listed, we do offer a generic Android version. Um, so if I go to Apple again, let's say I just select a device, go next. Any acquisition method that is available for the device you've selected will be present in this screen. Okay, and as far as cloud goes, these are the ones that I was talking to you about. So if I click email, you can see all the top runners of email. And then if I don't uh, see the one that I need, I can do my email service is not listed, select next into the email, password, email server, what port they're using, and whether they're storing the emails on the server or on the endpoints themselves. Uh, so putting this information in will allow you to acquire any email account. Going into Google Cloud, you can see uh, the Drive, Gmail, Keep, Timeline Sync, My Activity, uh, WhatsApp QR codes, uh, WhatsApp with the phone number, the iCloud where you enter in the Apple ID and password, and of course Microsoft 365 that will use that email and password. Um, so that was it for add data source. Now searching through artifacts. Um, here is your global search option for Microsoft X. You can type in a word or a phrase, treat it as a regular expression, add a word file. Uh, if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you can use a predefined search. This is updated out regularly. Uh, so peer-to-peer -peer applications, uh, if you're looking for uh, you know, stuff that you, you kind of know what you're looking for, but nothing specific. This is a really great place to come and search your data set. Now, if you kind of know exactly what data source you want to search for, uh, you, you can actually narrow it down all the way to, hey, I don't want to search across everything. I really only want to know what's in memory um, or, or this Android backup. So if I go down here, now I only have uh, options that are available uh, from these data sources. So if say no Android backup, only search through the mem file. Well, now it's only going to show me artifacts that are present in that mem file. 
Okay, so what I'm looking for is actually just pictures in the MIM file. So now I've completely narrowed down my search and I'm not spending unnecessary time searching through the rest of my data sources. Creating a report, you can see all the different types of formats that are available uh, with the project fix support here on the end, uh, Google overlay formats, uh, and your standard formats. Um, you can choose to open the report when it's done processing. Selecting advanced options will allow you, how you uh, to choose how you want to look, uh, whether you want to sort your items, who generated it, put your company, company logo, splitting your artifacts up by uh, files, by pages. Do you want to group your artifacts based on the contact they came from or the mail folder they were found in? Uh, the files. Do you want to include those pictures that were detected? If so, do you want to blur them? Do you want to copy the embedded files or attachments into a folder right next to your report? Going into columns, uh, this is every artifact that was found, uh, and you can kind of pick and choose what you want available in your report. Uh, so uh, with that being said, if I were to click on, say, passwords, I can then choose the available columns for passwords, and then over here in the selected columns item uh, is actually going to be uh, what is printed out into the report. The folders option, just kind of like a file system viewer. Uh, do you want your, your files um, all in one folder or do you want subfolders uh, for each artifact? Uh, so that's how you would make that selection. Next is export evidence reader. Um, so that is a free reader that allows you to pick and choose what you want other people to be able to see. So if you need to pass off a data source, uh, but only one data source out of the entire investigation, uh, you can do that. You can just say, hey, only give somebody this E01, uh, but also uh, only give them the, the emails out of this E01 file. Uh, and this will just create a small case. It looks identical to the graphical user interface of Felksoft X. Uh, they can load it up. They can search through the artifacts. They can tag artifacts. They can create reports from the artifacts, but they can't add or remove from the evidence. Uh, and then create a key dictionary file. So this will just basically do a strings, uh, pull any potential passwords out of an already indexed image uh, and create a dictionary file that can be used uh, later to brute force um, a, a different machine. A lot of times people reuse their passwords and that's uh, what that would be good for. Underneath that is automatic searches and that's going to like it sounds, happen automatically. Uh, it's based on regular expression. Uh, so if anything matches the criteria set in that regular expression, uh, it will be presented here. You can either use this or you don't have to. It's really just there uh, to help you as an examiner maybe get uh, a step in the right direction. Now, under uh, the data sources pane, uh, you'll kind of get a thousand yard view of your data sources, what type of artifacts are within them. These are hyperlinks, so you can jump directly to artifacts. Uh, if I am to close this up uh, and you see show nested data sources, so data sources that were found while indexing or analyzing the data sources that you loaded in. If I uncheck this box, you'll see three data sources that go away. These three data sources, the two Android backups and the page file were found in another data source. Opening these backups up, you can see all of the information uh, that we were able to recover from this nested data source. So pretty cool that it pulled it out and analyzed it separately so you can dig into it separately and it not be jumbled in with whatever image it came from. Uh, over here on the right hand side, uh, we have an application type and artifacts. You can see it starts at the highest number of artifacts per application, all the way down to the lowest, which was a Wi-Fi connection. And artifacts is the same way. Um, by the way, all of these are scrollable, so you can make them as big or as small as you would like. Uh, so for this instance, uh, for artifacts, again, it starts at the highest number of artifacts per your entire data source. Uh, all the way down to the lowest. Uh, as you can see, that's Wi-Fi connections, malware processes, payment cards, and payment favorites. Uh, you can either look at these in grid view like we're doing now or in chart view. It gives you a percentage of the type of artifacts, uh, or in this case, application, uh, take up the data sources. Same for artifacts. Uh, so it looks like pictures is our largest. I can select this and go directly into our artifacts tab. So 
Uh, to to show you guys this real quick, uh, this is the uh, artifacts tab. So any of these artifacts I select on, they'll populate in the center screen. The bottom portion of this allows you to uh, look at the different type of data that is available uh, so you, in, in their different viewers. So right now we're in picture artifacts, so I'm going to have a picture preview. Um, I also have a hex viewer and I can either analyze this down here in this screen or I can use this pop up button and go full screen on the hex viewer. Now closing out the hex viewer and jumping back into artifacts, uh, I can uh, show you the structure and overview portion. So overview is actually going to be all artifacts from all of your data sources combined. You'll notice if I select cookies under browsers, uh, I'll actually have different uh, data sources. So this one, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, is from an Android backup. If I select uh, something else, uh, you can see, well, I guess that's a, a, it's another bad example. Um, but I can scroll really to any of these and hopefully I pick a different one this time. Okay, uh, so this one you can see came out of the, the volume uh, 32256, which inevitably came out of a, another backup. Um, so I'm just picking the wrong ones here. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, but this is going to be a conglomeration of all of your data sources uh, and their artifacts in one. If you want to look at these artifacts separately by data source, you go into the structure tab. Now what this is going to do is break out each one individually. So your data sources that you loaded in and the artifacts that were discovered uh, from those data sources. So if you only want to look at your E01, now you can look in your E01. Um, going back into overview, let's just say um, I, I click on geolocation data. Uh, so this is going to be anything that has grid coordinates. Uh, these look like some pictures, so let's go ahead and select these. I can right click and choose show checked items on map and it will open up an embedded map uh, within Bugsoft X. So it looks like I've got two pictures that were taken uh, in Florida in the United States and, and some over uh, here. So if I am to click on this, it will actually show me what the picture is, uh, where it came from, and if I select show on artifacts, it'll bring me directly back to the artifacts tab. So now there's that picture that I was just looking at. Another really neat thing that you can do uh, within Belksoft X is you can select the picture, right click, and choose show checked items on Google Earth. And this will open up Google Earth, plot the artifact, and then take you down to a satellite image file of where that artifact um, is saying that it was located. OK, uh, now in additional viewers, uh, MFT header uh, information can be viewed, uh, the hex headers. Let's say I go into uh, email, I select a, uh, in, a mailbox, and now I have a SQLite database. Uh, again, I can look at the SQLite database in here, or I can open it up to its own viewer. OK. Going back into artifacts, um, now what I want to do is jump into chats so and kind of show you uh, what we can do with chat messages. Uh, so let's select Facebook. Uh, we have the SQLite databases, the item text that's available. Uh, if you want to create a report with chat bubbles, you would do it from this chat screen. Just right click, create report for all items, and you can create the report with the chat bubbles. Uh, if you want to break out these conversations by individuals instead of uh, like who this person had a conversation with uh, individually, we can right click, show contacts, and now it'll break out the different people that this person was having communication with and how many communications they had. And you can do this with any of the chat uh, messages. Uh, now, up here at the top, this is a mini timeline. Uh, if I'm looking for something in 2018 to 2019, again, this is just kind of general. It wasn't specific dates, uh, but you can see tildes next to my artifacts. It's saying, hey, there's roughly this many artifacts in that amount of time. To clear the filter, just single click. 
Uh, and if you want a more in uh, fine-tuned date range, just go to the global filter button in the top right-hand corner and select date range and select a date. Uh, moving into incident investigations module. Again, this is that additional module that's available to you uh, in X corporate. Uh, so that will be your methods of persistence, uh, app DLLs, uh, change in default file association services, uh, apps that run at startup, shim cache, prefetch, uh, recent documents, LNK files, downloaded files, etc. So uh, this is a really good place to start uh, doing an incident investigation uh, because these are the most common types of intrusion, uh, methods of intrusion. Uh, getting out of incident investigations, going into the connection graph. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite options here. Let's go ahead and reset back to default. Uh, so just looking at this, it looks a little busy, uh, but we can toggle this. We can hide our titles. Uh, OK, uh, so now what I want to do is, OK, let's find somebody. OK, so let's go with Sebastian. Uh, clicking Sebastian's node over here, over here on the left hand side, I can see everything that Belkasoft X knows about this person based on the artifacts that were discovered. Let's select um, Emily. Selecting Emily, uh, I have her name and her unique identifier. What about Catherine? Okay, uh, Catherine as well. Uh, but you know, selecting these nodes will tell you information about the people. Uh, what's really neat uh, is actually uh, say, hey, only show me people who have had at least 12 conversations and it narrows down your scope. What about Mary Poppins? Okay, well, there's Mary Poppins, there's her phone number, her email address, but what's connecting Mary Poppins and Sebastian? Selecting the link between the two nodes will bring up, let me go ahead and pull this over, selecting the link between the new two nodes will bring up any communication or uh, really any artifact that is connecting these two individuals. You can see I have chat messages between the two and mail between the two. Uh, and you can create reports directly from this location by checking them and create report uh, for checked items. Uh, if you want a screenshot of this graph after you've uh, uh, figured out who you want to, to be shown, you just right click and create a report and it'll take a screenshot of what's visible on your screen. Uh, I mentioned the different types of viewers. We do have SQLite viewers, registry viewers, plist viewers, uh, hex viewers, and the file system. If I select the file system, you can break down uh, all of your, your data sources by folder. Uh, you also have the option uh, to list these in uh, you know, recursive view. So if I click on the easier one file, uh, I can either view uh, the grid view and just go down and see all the data sources that are underneath the E01, or I can do recursive view, and it's going to show me every single file that is within the E01. Um, jumping into the task tab, again, this is more of a front side uh, before the analysis type thing. So when you start analyzing your cases, uh, this is where uh, you'll see the progress. If you need to enter in a uh, decryption password, uh, all of that will be done here from the task tab. Now, moving to the timeline. Uh, this is the timeline in the bar graph view. Uh, I can right click, look at the artifacts, select these artifacts, and it will take me directly to the artifacts tab. If I go back to the timeline again, uh, I can actually change it from bar, bar view to grid view. Uh, and this is where uh, you can still view your messages, uh, all of the registry, you know, however, be, however it's being stored, uh, you can view that information. Selecting this, this uh, right here, uh, I can see the item text, I can look at it in hex, I can see where it came from, so the origin path, any sort of data about that data can be found over here on the right. Uh, and all of these can be filtered by time, you can filter by text, selecting these uh, filters. Uh, and, and typing something specifically in uh, that you're searching for. Now, that uh, does wrap up kind of my presentation. I know we got about 10 minutes, uh, so I can answer uh, any questions that you may have. Jared, I did notice a question pop up there. Uh, is Passware attached to Belkasoft or is it embedded within? 
So it is uh, integrated within Belkasoft, uh, but again, that is an additional module that's going to have to be purchased um, separately, and it's just the cost of what uh, Passware costs uh, outside of Belkasoft. So you're just purchasing for, uh, Passware Forensic Kit and uh, having it on your forensic workstation, you can seamlessly decrypt uh, files uh, within the Belkasoft program itself. Uh, but you can also use uh, Password Forensic Kit without Belkasoft. Okay, thank, okay, you, for thank that. you for that. Absolutely. Um, uh, I will I just will invite just anyone to come in and ask any questions or post them in the Q&A section and I will ask them for you um, if there's any more. No other questions, any concerns or anything? OK, uh, if that's the case, I'll just remind everybody that uh, we will be meeting again on December 7th for a review of Belkasoft remote acquisition and incident response and triage. So if you're interested in that, and I would recommend it to continue with the entire suite of tools, um, we will be meeting the same time, 1400 hours Eastern Standard Time on December 7th. And uh, you can sign up through Teal Technology Canada's website uh, for that. And you will receive email notifications and reminders for that event as well. So if there's nothing else, I will thank Belkasoft and specifically Jared Lubert for his uh, very informative and insightful presentation. And uh, I will look forward to seeing everyone that is here today back on December 7th for a continuation of this. And thank you for everyone attending and thank you for your time.